I'm recording. Hello, family, friends, and future MDs. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to another episode of ADs Rx for MD. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you are notified every single time I post. Today, we are going to be talking about a very important part of the med school application process, and that is your personal statement. So the problem with the personal statement is that a lot of people don't really know what its purpose is and there are tons of common mistakes that we've probably all made. I know for me when I first made my personal statement, I wanted to include a lot of material about liking science when I was a kid, having toys and games and books that were science related and all of those things are important and they do often represent an interest in science, they are not really effective at what the personal statement is supposed to accomplish. So the first question is, what is your personal statement? Your personal statement should basically be communicating that you have thought about the decision to pursue medicine, you've had experiences that have confirmed that desire and that interest, you have been proactive in seeking out those experiences, and up until this point, everything you've done has continued to make it very clear to you that you wanna practice medicine. The other thing that you wanna make sure you're doing with your personal statement is distinguishing yourself. Let's talk about some of the tips that I received that I wanna share with you guys that totally changed the game for my personal statement. I had a bad one <laughs> at first. And bad doesn't mean you're a bad writer, it just means it is not effectively accomplishing what a personal statement should accomplish. You definitely want to avoid cliches. Your primary answer should not be that you come from a long line of doctors unless you can draw from what you have observed from having those doctors around you and maybe spending time with them and talking to them and even having shadowing experiences with them. A lot of times it's not how long you've wanted to be a doctor or it's how committed have you been to that interest and how have you pursued that interest. So showing that maybe you've done research can be really effective. Be volunteered in a hospital that you've shadowed and also talking about what you've learned from your shadowing experiences that show that you are spending your time, often your free time, doing things to further your understanding of the medical field. Having your personal statement kind of flow like a story is really effective because people are drawn into good stories and they want to see how they end. And especially if you're on admissions committee and you want to see the story end with this person becoming a doctor, you're going to be much more likely to pinpoint them and say, I want to know more about them. Another thing that's really good to do is mention how you want to impact the future of medical education and impact your patients. Okay, so my first personal statement, I started talking about, I've always loved science since I was a child and I had all these toys and books that were science related and I loved them. <laughs> That was just totally the wrong direction to go. I also made a mistake in trying to kind of cram everything. I was almost trying to make my personal statement my application where I was like, I have to show that I volunteered, I have to show that I've shadowed, I have to show that I've done this, I have to show, and that's not what the personal statement is for. Let's look at a step-by-step -step process that you can follow to help you get some ideas on how you wanna formulate your personal statement. Step number one is to identify the catalyst moment or experience and also identify your feelings and your thoughts, what you took away from that experience. The next thing you should do is identify experiences or activities that you have done since that catalyst moment that are related to either science, pre-med, or the medical field. And it's also helpful to write them down in chronological order so that you can create links between them later. This may include tutoring, research project, clinical employment. The next thing you wanna do is try to find relationships or links in between the activities. Ultimately show how the most recent activities that you're taking part in prepare you for pursuing an MD. So for me, my catalyst was when my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. A part of that catalyst experience is doctors that we sat with to get second opinions and just to figure out who was going to be her doctor. It was one that sort of 
merged the intellectual intelligence with the emotional intelligence and really was compassionate and empathetic and kind of drew us in and made my grandmother feel more comfortable. And so I talk about how I realized the impact that a doctor can have on a patient's care and even a patient's desire to be involved in their health outcomes. Then I talk about how I added biochemistry as a major. So remember, we're keeping it stepwise and talking about how you continue to pursue medicine and how you're just getting closer and closer and closer. And the last thing to do is to actually earn the MD. So when I talk about biochemistry, I talk about also music. So. Early on can be a place where if you have another interest or another major and you know how to directly relate it into medicine, you can bring it in now. So I talk about how the lessons that I had learned in music, discipline, and dedication came in and helped me in my studies in science as it distinguishes you from other applicants. So I talk about how when I took on the biochemistry major, I noticed I really enjoyed my lab-based courses and how I felt I was really interested in working with actual observable systems. And then I talk about how I pursued an internship conducting cancer research. So I talk about how I enjoyed the research because that was really the first time I had actually spent any major time in observing live cells. That was an experience that really confirmed for me that, okay, I wanna work with live organisms and live systems and I wanna apply my knowledge and my passion towards the human body. So then I went on to talk about how I've already begun to contribute to the future of science slash medicine, how I want to be equipped to contribute to the future of medicine, and the role that I think acquiring an MD will play in that. So what I talked about was the fact that I had a desire to play an informative and instructional role in the lives of others when it comes to optimizing their health, and I also wanted to be actively involved in creating a plan for them to accomplish that. So one of the examples that I use of what I've been able to do so far is mentoring or speaking to high school students at a college fair where I was able to talk about chemistry and biochemistry and biology with them and even inspire some of them to pursue that. So when you're bringing up experiences like this, you wanna be careful because it could possibly make an admissions committee member say, okay, well you like teaching, so why not be a teacher? So if you are going to bring up these types of experiences, you need to make sure that you relate it back to being a doctor. So I talk about how I enjoyed that, but how I was not completely fulfilled because my real desire is to be almost like a coach to others and help walk them through their health journey and also be a part of implementing and creating a plan for how they can approach their health. Then the very last thing that I had in my personal statement was almost like a commitment slash oath of how I want to impact the world and how I think that attending medical school will be the ultimate manifestation of doing that. That is how you can begin to approach the personal statement and over time you'll see which ideas you want to include, which ones you don't necessarily need to include, and which ones work best with the logical flow of the story that you're trying to tell. When you think you have a good personal statement, I recommend you have three people review. One should be just grammar, and then only two people to actually critique whether or not it's an effective personal statement. I do not recommend you go beyond two people because you are always gonna get slightly different answers and slightly different critiques from different people, and sometimes that advice can start to conflict with each other. So two is more than enough. It should be very trusted people, um, either current doctors or current med students. Now, I can definitely go into a little bit more detail if you guys want me to. So if you do, leave a comment down below and tell me exactly what else you would like to know and maybe I'll do another video or I will just respond to your comment. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and I will see you in the next video. It's God got me.